Hey, you guys, Dr. Nicole here coming to you today to talk about what is interstitial cystitis. So I'm a pelvic health physical therapist. I founded Pelvic Sanity, and I'm also the author of the interstitial cystitis solution. So this video is meant to be a short overview of interstitial cystitis and how pelvic floor physical therapy can help. And I hope you will continue to watch a lot of our other videos and look at our, a lot of our resources around the interstitial cystitis solution book um, so you can get a well-rounded uh, view of the condition. So interstitial cystitis is also known as a bunch of other things. Um, it's also known as painful bladder syndrome, bladder pain syndrome. Um, sometimes it's called urological pelvic pain syndrome, all kinds of acronyms for it. Um, in the United States here, it's mostly known as IC slash BPS or interstitial cystitis slash painful bladder syndrome or bladder pain syndrome. Any of the above, we're talking about the same thing. So the interesting thing here is that it is characterized by two major symptom presentations that are combined. You have to have some sort of pelvic pain, right? Which is usually in the lower abdominal area perceived to be coming from the urinary bladder. Again, the, the key word there is perceived to be. And then you have urinary urgency and frequency. So anything over seven times per day of urination or more than one time per night is considered um, urinary frequency. Um, and then usually patients have a very strong urge to go and normally uh, don't totally void their bladders a ton. So then we have this urgency frequency sort of situation where you have a super strong urge, you go and then you can't urinate fully or you, there are only a few seconds of pee come out. And then you might have some pain associated with that or there's lower abdominal pelvic pain. So those two things combined can get you the diagnosis of interstitial cystitis. It can be diagnosed on symptoms alone. Uh, it actually cannot technically be diagnosed with just a cystoscopy because interstitial cystitis is what we call a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning that there is no one single test that you can say where it's like, ooh, you have interstitial cystitis. Um, you can only say with something like a cystoscopy, you don't have things like bladder cancer, polyps, all these other types of bladder conditions. Um, so then with the symptoms plus the absence of another cause, then we can say that you have interstitial cystitis. And that is from the American Urological Association where a cystoscopy is no longer needed to actually diagnose IC. Now, there are a small subset of patients with interstitial cystitis that actually have bladder lining damage. And that is, they're called Hunter's lesions. And that can be diagnosed with a, and can only be diagnosed with a cystoscopy, which is a little camera that goes up your urethra and looks actually inside the bladder. So it's with all of um, these would actually be, this is what the bladder looks like kind of normal. This would all be sort of red and actually create those ulcers where we'd actually be, have perceptible bladder lining damage. Um, and that's called Hunter's lesions. Again, less than 10% of people that have been diagnosed with interstitial cystitis actually have that bladder lining pathology, even though almost every single one of my IC patients would swear that their bladder looks and is, is like an ulcerated bladder, but it's usually not technically like that. Um, another really common uh, symptom presentation is an rigmarole is, is when you feel like you have a UTI, you would swear about a million dollars that you have a UTI, you go, you get tested. Um, you usually will test negative or culture negative, even though you still swear that you have that, that feeling. So what is actually really going on? And in the last five, six years, we've actually learned a ton more about IC as it stands. And there's a wonderful doctor named Kenneth Peters at, from Beaumont Hospital. And he sums it up quite nicely. He says a lot of times with interstitial cystitis, the bladder is actually an innocent bystander um, in a really complex pelvic pain problem, which is really more characterized by pelvic floor dysfunction and really heightened nervous system upregulation where the, where the brain bladder connection, where you're getting an accurate um, urinary urge to pee is actually goes a little bit haywire and you, you're not getting those activation patterns that are quote unquote normal. Um, so 
that sort of sums up at least where we sort of are with the condition right now. Online, there are a ton of interstitial cystitis myths, and so much so that on our Instagram, both at Nicole Cozine DPT and at Pelvic Sanity, we have a whole myth series related to interstitial cystitis. I highly encourage you guys to go look at that. We'll probably do another video on that. Uh, but now I want to talk about the pelvic floor. Now, the pelvic floor is a bunch of these muscles here, right? Anything that you see here in red is the pelvic floor. And our organs are situated in here. If you're, a, if you're male and you have been diagnosed with interstitial cystitis, which is a thing, um, then you just don't have this one, right? You have this, which is your bladder. This is the uterus, fallopian tubes, ovaries, and then you have your rectum. If you're male, you obviously don't have the uh, ovaries, but you do have the urinary bladder and then your prostate sits underneath the urinary bladder there. So now I'm going to take away some of these organs except for the bladder. So you can kind of see, because everyone always asks, well, do I have interstitial cystitis or do I have pelvic floor dysfunction? And the reality is, is that pelvic floor dysfunction because of where the bladder sits can actually create and mimic all of the symptoms of interstitial cystitis, which is very confusing for you as patients, but is also really exciting for us as patients and, and with our pelvic floor physical therapist, because if your pelvic floor is involved at all in your symptoms, we can actually treat the pelvic floor piece and help to calm down a lot of those other symptoms. Over 90% of people with interstitial cystitis also have pelvic floor dysfunction. That's a lot, you guys. And those pelvic floor muscles that we just talked about, especially these ones that are around your urethra and vaginal opening, um, can actually mimic the painful urination. They can spasm and not let your pee exit well, create urinary hesitancy, urinary retention. Um, and can also create a bunch of pelvic pain and perceived bladder pain. Now, if you look at actually where the urinary bladder sits in this pelvis, it actually sits right behind the pubic bone, and it sits literally on top of these pelvic floor muscles. So I always say things to my patients like, if this muscle here gets irritated, for reasons, uh, there's a ton of other reasons why that can happen, which is why you need to get to a pelvic floor physical therapist to figure out why your pelvic floor is, is what is doing what it's doing. But if that's happening based on the literal anatomical position of the pelvic floor and the bladder, if these muscles get mad and spasmed, then it can send a message to the bladder and the bladder only knows how to transmit basically two things, either I'm hurting or I have to pee. And so the pelvic floor can actually be driving a ton of your urinary urgency and frequency and pelvic pain. And so much so that in the studies that have been done on pelvic floor physical therapy in IC patients, it actually, we are given the only thing on the entire American Urological Association guidelines for what you should do if you have interstitial cystitis, pelvic physical therapy is the only thing on that list that is given an evidence grade of A. We basically are teacher's pet to the interstitial cystitis gods. It's like, if you have that, you need to get to pelvic floor physical therapy. Now, the problem is, is that most urologists don't know how to assess the pelvic floor muscles, or they're not really fans or referring to pelvic floor PTs. I don't know why. It's on their American Urological Association guidelines by their governing body. So that's a whole other topic for a different video. But what you can do is, and we have downloadable versions of the American Urological Guidelines, both in the interstitial cystitis solution um, area for the website, and there's a representation of them in the book. You can print those out and take them to your urologist and be like, hey, I think I need to look at my pelvic floor component to the symptoms. That is a really wonderful request and should be granted by your urologist. Now, in most states, you do not have to get a physician's referral first to or in order for you to see a pelvic floor physical therapist. So I would highly recommend that you can just go to your pelvic floor physical therapist. And we sometimes know the best urology and urogynecology doctors that 
treat interstitial cystitis well. So a lot of times you can get to a great doctor by seeing a pelvic PT first. So takeaways from this little talk is that interstitial cystitis does not have to be all about your bladder. In fact, evidence shows to the contrary that it is actually more of a pelvic floor dysfunction issue and a nervous system like upregulation brain bladder connection issue that can be helped if we address those components. Um, there are some people that have bladder lining issues, right? But um, even those people also have pelvic floor dysfunction that can be creating symptoms of urinary urgency, frequency, and pelvic pain. So sort of no matter what your why is for your specific IC symptoms, you at least need to get to a pelvic floor physical therapist to see what sort of percentage we're talking about with how much we think that the pelvic floor is involved in your symptom presentation or otherwise. Um, one of the other big IC myths that we bust in our IC Myth series is a, all the stuff around nutrition. So I highly encourage you guys to go out there. There's an entire um, uh, section in the book on nutrition and how, and I'm gonna say it here, that the interstitial cystitis diet, what you're probably given first and what you see first, does actually not exist. Um, every single person needs to work with either their pelvic floor physical therapist or a nutritionist in order to find their personal trigger foods and food sensitivities. It's not always about what you're putting in your mouth. Sometimes it's so much more about the pelvic floor and how your pelvic floor is responding in a integrated neurological system that is causing some of your interstitial cystitis symptoms. So please, please, please um, feel free to get the interstitial cystitis solution. It has a ton of self-help things. It has stretches. It has medication lists. It has all of the most updated research on the condition. Um, and it also has a ton of explanation that I just went over um, on the pelvic floor, a lot of self-help guides, and a lot of resources to bring back to your medical team um, to sort of get you back on the right track to proper interstitial cystitis treatment. Um, feel free to reach out to us on our website, pelvicsanity.com, and you can purchase the interstitial cystitis solution on Amazon. Appreciate your time.